Hey, good morning, YouTube viewers. Cooper's Automotive, and we're working on a 2002 Ford Ranger with the uh, three liter engine in it with a seized up compressor towed in because the engine just uh, couldn't crank it back up, burnt it up. I uh, cut the belt off to actually drive it in the door. There you go. And um, ordered up all the parts for it. Uh, when I see Black Death and seized up compressors, I don't try to flush the condensers. They're too cheap these days. Why? If you do that, and then you're just asking for trouble. So um, I'm going to commit to doing this job and uh, replace the compressor, the condenser, the accumulator, and the orifice tube. Uh, blow out the lines that are left over and flush it out. So let's begin. All right, let's begin here. And uh, first thing that I'm going to take off is the air cleaner snorkel right here. That way uh, we can get to our lines and get some things out there. Roll some tools up close to me. Get everything situated. Situated. There we go. I'll take that clamp off right there. Going to have a little snorkel valve right here. little vent tube. Excuse me. Right there. Set those tools about trying to fall off over there. I found this old Craftsman screwdriver laying on the sidewalk. Okay. There we go. Came out of there. Then you're going to disconnect your uh, mass airflow. Unclip your air filter right here. Assembly. And remove that. And just set it off to the side wherever you want to put it. And I'm going to tuck that right there. Then from there, let's go ahead and, um, well, let's go ahead and let's remove the AC accumulator, I guess, would be a fine starting place. So um, we got these quick release clamps right here or spring-loaded clamps. Sometimes they're not too quick about the release. They can be a royal pain in the butt. Mm-hmm. Let's see if my spring clip is released. I believe it is. May have to take it off at the other end. May have to take our accumulator off. Another thing you can do is cut your accumulator off on that side, which um, I'm going to do. So I'm going to get my little cutting wheel, 90 degree angle here. <clears throat> We're going to grab an air hose. Battery tools have gotten to where they are so good anymore. <clears throat> but this one is not. So I'm going to cut right here. Okay, once you get it to that point like that, that's going to be hot at this moment. But you should be able to grab a rag or anything and hopefully twist it out of there. A pair of pliers might be handy at this time. That thing is actually not even spinning, which is very unusual. There we go.
She's starting to come out of there. All right, so we got one tube out of there going right here. And we can just throw that away. Now you got a plug here for, for clutch cycling switch right there. And you're gonna save that unless you're gonna replace it. This one's working, so we're not. Obviously, I'm gonna discharge the AC system, which I did before I started the video. Low side switch. I'm gonna set it here. Now we got these right here. I don't particularly know what size they are, but we just use the big crescent wrenches. And if it's not too, too tight, these will work just fine and break these out of here. Once you do that, good. On the bottom down there is a band that goes around the accumulator that holds that on. And usually they're eight millimeters, which it looks like this one is. Sometimes you can just loosen it up. Sometimes you have to take it all the way off. In this case, it looks like this one's already letting us move. So we're just gonna pull it out of there. There's your accumulator right there on that. I know that's not a great picture, but we can remove that off to the side now. Let's tilt our camera. Oh, no, actually we're okay. So the accumulator's out of the way. Setting right down in here is your liquid line. And you'll need a release tool to get that liquid line out of there. Using the green one, place it up in there. Get your clip in there. <clears throat> and get your liquid line disconnected. And down inside there's your orifice tube, providing it's not seized up or locked up. Let's see how much crud's on that sucker when we pull it out of here. There we are. And you know what? That is clean considering that the compressor locked down on this vehicle. So unusual, the black death, and we don't see black crud all over this. Chances are you might could get away with the just a compressor if you're doing it on your own vehicle. Doing it on a customer's vehicle, we can't take that risk. And we offer a lifetime warranty on this repair. So if anything goes wrong with it, two years, parts and labor, lifetime on all the parts. So let's commit to the rest, the next move. Let's go after this condenser down inside the front of this radiator. And uh, you got some 10 mils on each side of this radiator right here. And as soon as I find my 10 millimeter socket, we will take that out. I've got it right here. You're just gonna wanna tilt this radiator forward once we get the lines disconnected from the condenser. And again, I'm using my air filter box to hold some of my nuts and bolts here. So you kind of move it forward like that. Everything providing going well, you'll be able to get your condenser out of there. If not, you may have to remove the radiator, which we can do that too. Pull it up a little bit, slide it back, and you shouldn't have to. There's some little push tabs holding this little windshield that keeps all the air flowing through the radiator. I'm going to take that off and place it right there. Now, down here on this side of the condenser down inside, there's a 13 millimeter that holds the high side pressure line to the AC condenser there. take that off. I'm going to place it right here on the battery. And there's going to be another line on the other side. It's also going to be a 13 mil on the other side of the condenser. I'm 
And I'm gonna place this one on top of the air filter and air filter box. Remove that out and that's your liquid line side right there. And we just move it up a little bit. Now that we've got both of those out of there, on the top, our eight millimeter that hold that condenser in. Let's see if I have a quarter inch. Um, well, I'm gonna see if I have my quarter inch Milwaukee right here, but I don't see it handy. So with that not being handy, we'll stay with the three eighths and reach down inside here and get this that one placing that on my battery because it's going to go on that side keeping me organized and that one so there's those I was just looking for my employee. Finally got quiet on a Friday. We have been jumping through hoops, or at least I have today, fixing all kinds of stuff. I'm going through there. Has a little push tab again, holding that little, what I call condenser mount in there. It's not a little one, it's a pretty long push tab, to be quite honest with you. Show you what that looks like. Like that, and push it up in there. I'm gonna put it on this side. Same thing on the other side. Leaning our condenser forward, getting a hold of our push tab right there, and prying. AC work in Florida is almost year round. We do a lot of it. So you folks from your northern states that don't see a lot of it, sometimes I get calls from guys asking me questions from other shops because, you know, we experience it a lot, whereas you may not. After you get that out, trying not to cut yourself, You should be able to get that radiator forward enough. See what's holding me here. You can reach down into the front down here, get your hand underneath it. Let's see. Sometimes it's uh, as simple as one of the windshields holding it. Um, in this particular case, it looks like a little loop in the condenser in the bottom is bending back in there and is catching me so let's get a close look at this side and pretty sure it is on this side I think I could pull it to my driver's side just a little bit. I might could wiggle it out from underneath there. Like that. So kind of slide it to your driver's side. And you're not worried about damaging this thing because you are not keeping it. And it's the lines right there. Out on our windshield and we got a condenser and then you got your pieces on each side that's going to go on your new one when we get it but for right now let's put it off to the side now let's go after this AC compressor obviously you got to unplug it got three ten three thirteens and a ten on the back of the uh, AC compressor after I got all the lines loose, I'll take the compressor off, pull it forward. You can get to that 10 millimeter on the back of that line a whole lot easier. Let's see 
if this will get it out of there. Uh, not turning that one or that one. So let's go back to our handy dandy ratchet. Get up there a little bit. Let me find some kind of uh, penetrating oil. That one's fine. I said this one's the problem. And we'll do that. Let's see if that's enough to get this thing together. I don't know. May have to do it all the way by hand. Now that actually helps. Okay. I think my battery's going low again on my Milwaukee. I've got three more batteries for these things. So 13, it's a long bolt. Some of these had a switch, I believe, on the back of the AC compressor. And would say that this one does not. I'm just going to put those on my cart, which is sitting over here to the side. You should be able to wiggle your compressor up. Now, I see something here piece of the belt st stuck in there. This line also is connected to a uh, bracket down there on the bottom of the alternator. So makes it a little bit tighter than we'd like. Let me see if I want to take that off or not. Um, yeah, I think I'm going to take it off. You don't have to. If you guys want to do it around that, you can go another route. I don't know what size it is underneath there. If it's a 13 or if it's a 15, I just got to kind of fill it a little bit. Usually there's 13s, but I grabbed a 15 and it feels like I'm right. It's a 13. being a royal pain that little bracket I don't know why it's kind of uh, oh let's see it's twisting the actual bracket itself so you know when you get stuck on one thing and you're trying it that way and it doesn't work the way you anticipate it you think about it for a minute and then you I move forward to try and get another way I'm sure most of you do get our compressor up a tiny bit I mean you could really fight it if you want to but it's a 10 millimeter on the back of the AC compressor back here let's see if I'm able to loosen it up enough coming behind a looks like a braided fuel line on this particular one and if I can, yeah, we have plenty of room here. Sorry for getting a shot on my back. But the manifold, the manifold, the AC manifold, that's what I'm taking off. Now they have a little slide notch down inside of that um, bolt in most cases from what I remember. So sometimes you don't even have to take it all the way out. You can notch it out of there. But it might make it more difficult. All 
I'm just going to let it fall. And then I'm going to wiggle my compressor and lift my manifold up a little bit and pull it right out toward the battery. And there it is, the locked up compressor. Now that that's done, I'm going to pause the video for just a little bit and uh, start setting some of my parts up. All right, we got our parts kind of prepped. Right here is our compressor and FX10 or FX15. I'm not really quite sure. But that part number on that compressor is a Four Seasons compressor. It's a uh, 58172. That's your AC compressor. That's a new one. A new Four Seasons accumulator, 83014. That's your accumulator. You got an O-tube that comes with a full kit when you do that. And O-rings for everything. O-rings. Pick. Picking all your O-rings out. PAG 46 is your oil. I take a small funnel down through the discharge charge side, PAG 46, four ounces in my compressor. I put two ounces in my accumulator with a total of nine ounces in the system, but I never go more than six to six, seven ounces myself. It's always been a good number that has worked well for me. So PAG 46 on your oil on the O2 Ford Ranger, you got to have these pins that guide, that come with the compressor and put those in there and they slide down into these notches you're going to torque these bolts and i believe it's going to be right around 20 25 foot pounds about uh, i think this one's like 15 foot pounds i don't worry about that one too much so the first thing i'm going to put on is going in reverse order i'm putting my bolt in the back of my compressor and i am trying to without dumping my oil everywhere in this case get my compressor underneath here keeping my wire out from underneath it so I don't pinch it all up. And then we should be able to turn it just like that. Now looking at our manifold hose assembly, obviously the new compressor has the new O-rings on the back of it when you get it. If you can tilt this thing back, let's get my light again because I kind of moved it away from us. No, it's not helping you a whole lot, but in the back of this compressor, tilting it like that and looking for that little cut in our manifold so that you can slide it on there. You might just see my back here for a minute. Cut. Sometimes it's hard when you're shooting videos. Actually, they slow us down from completing the job. So we're talking through it and we're trying to keep visions up for everybody and we're trying to keep our lights so everybody can see. And manifold is being a royal, royal pain as I suspected that sometimes they can be. Come on now, baby. I feel it. It would have been so much nicer if that thing would have come out of there, that suction line. Would have made my life a whole lot easier. say trying to keep vision still trying to do the job all right let's stop and as I say if you're struggling for a little bit stop and do something different I'm gonna take the bolt out then I'm gonna line the manifold up and see if it will work that way usually I have luck doing it this way and it's Makes it a little easier, but without that line coming loose, it's gonna fight me the whole way. Get my compressor somewhat in the spot it's gonna go. Looking behind it. And 
kind of feeling my way around. All right, so once you can line it up with your back of your compressor with your manifold, making sure that it's flush, you can take that bolt out, however you guys want to do that. I've actually was able to turn that one in most of the way by hand. Remember our 13 long millimeter bolts here. And like I said, there's only three. Two in the bottom, one in the top. And your AC plug. I'm just going to go ahead and plug it in. All right, I'm going to leave that there. I'm going to tighten it up in a minute. Let's go after our AC condenser, our new condenser. Let's talk about that. Now, our AC condenser part number is a uh, APDI. And I can't quite get the number here for you, I don't think. Anyway, it's a 7014904. New aluminum high flow condenser. But the difference in it is you do not have room or a place to put the air direction. Little guides on the back of it. It's made a little different. Probably from China. Anyway, probably go in here a little bit better because they removed that little snorkel fin. That was hanging us up on the old one. Trying to line it up, there's a little thing in the bottom. Again, going through the front. Yeah, I see what I did. All right, had to move it over a little bit. You can look down through the front between the grill area and you can see where you need to go with it. They get it lined up with its mounts on the bottom. Can definitely see it, getting it there's another story. Again, light so I can see what I'm doing. All right, looks like to me, they're, they're little rubber mounts there. And I'm not in a hurry. Set it on those rubber mounts and she'll fall right in place there. She's rocking and rolling, okay? Good, that's, that's good. Right here in the top, if you remember, we had our mounts. And remember, we had this little tab here. And we put it on there push it down and we slide our Christmas tree tab. We'll hold it in place. I'm going to do the same thing over here, of course. Self-explanatory. Slide it down on there. Sliding it. Blindly. In place. There, worked out really well. So we got that in there. Now, again, eight mils. Let's start them in there. Start it. That one was sitting on my battery. At least I think it started. Oh, you know what? I'm being a dummy. Okay. Hang on just a second. Yeah. It caught me. Hmm. 
knew something didn't look right. They got to go like this. Oh, Turn it around. Now that's a whole lot better. I did drop the eight on the other side. So I may continue on with some other things, come back and find it. Let me see if it just fell to the floor. All right, it did. So we'll start that one in there. All right, I found my bolt down on the bottom. My eights in here. My brackets, excuse me, are in here. I'm going to go ahead and, and tighten those up. Now, I'm going to go ahead and set my radiator down inside and get it back into its mounts. And when I do that, obviously, I'm going to tighten my radiator up. Those are tens. Hmm. I think my clamp might have slipped over. Let me get my light again because because I can't see, but I don't even know where my light just slid down to. Anyway, I think I can fill it, get it up in here. Well, shoot. All right, we're coming back to it <laughs> because I need my light. All right, we got a light so I can see what the heck's going on here. Couldn't quite get that. Lined up. Oh, finally, it's in there. All right, so we've got our new O-rings on our high side line going to our condenser on this side.
Might have a defective part. No, nope, finally got it in there. All right, 13 mil. Tighten it up any way you want. Right down here. Right below the radiator cap. That's tight. I am going directly back now to the back of our compressor, that 10 mil. Make sure that I've got it in there and got it where I want it. Yep, it's lined up. Now that's tightened. The last thing I put on is always the accumulator filter. Now, an O tube right here, it's a red one. PAG 46 oil, again, lubricate the O ring to slide it down in there. Right down into the bottom line, it goes into the condenser on this side with the white part sticking up and the red part going down. Now, after you've placed that in there, you've got your liquid line again with your new O rings on it. Lubricating that right there with your PAG 46. Until you hear the snap rings clip, pull out your other plug for your condenser. And your 13, my other 13 millimeter nut that's on my air filter. And let's get our 13 millimeter wrench and let's tighten that one up. I'm going to grab it with my Milwaukee. And just tight. And I said last but least on the agenda is this accumulator right here. I've already installed, like I say, my new O-rings there. Got a new O-ring on my switch. And if everything goes well, I won't have to bend this aftermarket. Accumulator all the pieces to get it in here. Now, technically, if it gives you too much problems getting it down inside, you're going to have to loosen that clamp, which is that eight, and I'm going to do it right now. Maybe just enough. Let's see if that's going to be enough to work without taking it all the way out, because they can be a pain to line up. Now... Sometimes these things are so bent and you have to bend the accumulators to get the the top line to line up with your evaporator. In this case, we did not have to do that. Thank goodness, this is already, nope, not lubricated yet. There, lubrication on that. Has a new spring lock inside. And I heard it click and I know it's tight. 
little lubricant where my compressor cycling switch goes right there. We're hand tight right now. Take my load side cap off because I know I'm going to have to hook up my AC lines and evacuate the system. There we are. Let's plug in our cycling switch right there. And now let's tighten up our condenser, our that's the condenser, our accumulator to our evaporator pipe. Now you don't have to go too crazy with this. I mean, that's enough. That's all you need. The heater on this has been tied up there. I just noticed that broke going to the heater control valve. Was it broke before? I do not know the answer to that. This little shield right here. I should have put in there before I tightened up that radiator all the way. So I'm going to back it up just a little bit. Let me put up a few of my sockets here so I can find something. Okay. Whoops. <clears throat> Got it. Try not to take it all the way out. All right, we're in there. I'm going to go ahead and run that compressor bolts down most of the way before I torque them. Now those suckers go in tight. Probably because Well, actually, I don't know why, because... All right, let's get my, my torque wrench. Twenty-five foot, foot pounds is what I'm going with. I need a little extension, some kind of an extension here to get up there above that a little bit. Try not to use too much distance. Of course, it changes your torque. Okay. So the compressor's tight, the bolt on the back is tight, the radiator, the condenser bolts are tight, this is in, the accumulator's in, the orifice tube and the line is in, this side is tight. Air filter. 
and then we had tucked to the side the mass airflow sensor plug. Well, you know, before I do that, let's go ahead and we had to put a new belt on this. Because remember, it burnt it off. So let's leave that out of our way. And let's pause the video to go find the belt. Oh, belt routing for this one's in front. So if you need a belt routing on this Ford, it's right here. They don't always have them. But it sure is nice when they do. Never know. What would happen if a belt came off on the road? And you couldn't get a diagram like that, right? Let's see. It's making sure something because it's sounds like around that pulley. It does have to go around that fan. So there. All right, let's look at this for a minute. All right, we figured out that routing. Now let's go ahead and grab a 15 here. down on that tensioner. Hey, how about that? Belts routed. Yeah, belts all installed. We're looking good. One more thing else that I want to talk about is let's turn our compressor over a few times. Now, we can put our air cleaner in. Plug in our mass airflow. If you don't, it'll let you know. Whoop. Hang on. Screwdriver, eight millimeter, whatever you got. If you don't have an air conditioning machine, you're doing it yourself to evacuate it. You can probably pump it down yourself. Get a little vacuum machine and loaner from somebody if you don't own it. Let's go ahead and pull at least a 30 minute vacuum into this. All right, we're gonna let it do its thing. Once we get it charged up, we'll start it up and complete our video. Okay, the finished job on the 2002 Ford Ranger 3 liter AC job. And uh, she's running now. We're sweating back on our hoses. Our pressures were perfect. Uh, 230, 200 on the high side, rather 35 on the 
low side, 35.38 on that. I'm EQing out the machine now on a finished job here. We'll disconnect our uh, high side line here. Put our cap back on. Disconnect our low side. And put that cap on there. If you don't have an AC machine, you want to charge it with gauges, you can do that. Just try to meter your Freon into this thing of one pound, 14 ounces. And uh, say some of the tools you need, you know, basically a 13 millimeter, an eight millimeter, some uh, crescent wrenches, your spring lock tools to remove the spring lock clips from the accumulator and the uh, orifice tube line there. 13 mil on each side of your condenser there to get those condensers lines off of that and the 10 mil on the back of the AC compressor torquing the compressor to 25 foot pounds and uh, total empty system with uh, no oil in it at all is nine ounces of oil pag 46 um, that pretty well covers it any questions so uh, ask I will reply uh, thanks for watching the Cooper's Automotive many videos to come subscribe to the channel uh, like what you see uh, Hope that you do. Hope that it was helpful. Didn't have a lot of close-ups on it, but uh, wow, well, these old systems, it's been a while, but I've done them and uh, enjoy air conditioning work. Prices on parts have gotten so cheap. All right, tune in again.